Hey there. It's uh, it's Remy. So we have uh, the semi-final actually between Ed and uh, Drow. Uh, this is a uh, this is a game called Virtual Skipper Five, and uh, we're looking at some match racing at the moment. Uh, it's a game that I've been playing for about six years or so. I can umpire, I suppose. Okay, so uh, uh, it's a 1v1, and uh, basically this is the course here. The green line is the start line. They sail down to the bottom, back to the blue, which is the gate, back to the bottom, and all the way to the red line, which is the finish. Um, if you don't know much about me, I, uh, I, I live stream on Twitch three days a week on Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 8 a.m. to 12 noon um, Pacific time. And uh, my wife and I get out every Thursday and we... we uh... Oh, they're getting started here. Uh, we get we get out uh, around our area doing like a hike or something interesting and, and uh, we get it on video, edit it down to a bit of a 10-minute clip and throw that on YouTube as well. So feel free to uh, subscribe to the channel and, and stick around and see what we have to offer here because... Uh, yeah, it's a few games and a few real life bits and hopefully it uh you know hopefully you find it a bit interesting stick around there's quite a lot more to come this is uh, definitely recent that we've opened the youtube channel and uh, i'm also on instagram twitter facebook as uh, as remy as well so feel free to follow us there there's lots of pictures and uh, just of our life basically and Anyway, here we go. They're coming to the start line. Uh, they're not allowed to cross over the start line and enter until the four-minute mark. They have seven seconds left. Five seconds. The draw's a little bit early, but he's fixing that. Ed's just on time. Now, they both want to be fighting for the position over here. They both want the committee side of the course. Drow is defending the committee side, and Ed is attacking. Both of them want to be over here somewhere. Ed is going to try and get there, and Drow is not going to let him. Okay. So both boats coming into what's called irons, which is uh, trying to slow down as much as possible and uh, take position on each other. And as Drow's just putting himself in position to maintain control over Ed. Both boats coming into a, uh, a luff again, into irons. Trying to slow down. Ed doing everything that he can. Ed is desperately trying to take this side of the course, trying to go over there, but Drow is just not, not allowing him to. And there's, there's rules that are in place that Ed has to abide by, and Drow using to his advantage to defend the uh, the committee side of the course. So they have two minutes and 40 seconds until they're officially started the race. Um, that means as the timer hits zero, they want to be coming across the side of the line right here and then starting to go up this way towards the, uh, the buoy. So they're actually on the course side of the line right now, not on the start side, which is totally fine as long as they un end up there in the end. Drow doing a very good job maintaining control. Drow is, uh, the way that the boats are seated right now, um, Drow is in what's called the leeward position. So um, both boats are on the same tack, which is the port tack at the moment. And uh, being in the leeward position, he has rights. And oh, it looks like Ed's going backwards a little bit there. You can see the, uh, the wake in the front side of the boat or the bow side. So Ed, Ed definitely stopped Ed in the water. Drow will now come and jibe back onto starboard and maintain control again on Ed. Starboard always has rights over port. And um, starboard is the right side, port is the left side. Now in each video that we do um, of these match races, I'm trying to explain sort of uh, what what's what some of the some of the descriptions of uh the, of the rules and also some terminology so that you can kind of have an idea of, of what's happening a little bit all you need to know right now is that drow is completely in control and he's making sure that ed doesn't take 
isn't allowed to go over here. This is where they both want to be. That's, that's the bread and butter of the course right there. Now they only have 55 seconds left, so they're, they're going to have to head to this line eventually. Looks like they're both going to be going now. Drow keeping committee side. This is the committee boat, so this would be the committee side. This is the buoy, so or the pin, so this would be the pin side of the line. 38 seconds, 37 seconds. I think Ed's going to be late. Ed's got 26 seconds to get onto this side of the line and then cross and go back down that way. There's no way. There's no way that's going to happen. So essentially Drow has won this pre-start. Just keep in control. Not touching the other boat. It's not bumper boats. It's not bumper cars. It's nothing like that. It's just using specific rules to uh, to keep someone in a certain position. So, so Drow will be starting uh, on port tack, looks like. That 29.1 is is because Ed is on now, he's now on the course side of the line after the start. So he's over early. So he has to come over the start line and then he has to head back onto the course. So the tax, uh, I can describe the tax to you a little bit. That's a great, great pre-start from Drow. Um, it's a huge lead that he has. It's gonna be very difficult for Ed to, to do anything here to catch him. Um, but it, it has happened. There's stranger things have happened. The biggest thing in match racing is basically never give up. Um, it's especially in lighter winds. Lighter winds, it, it's. I'll give you an example. This this dark thing here, okay. This is a puff. There's more. There's more wind in here. And when you have really light winds, um, if you get into one of these by yourself and you get you get more wind than the other boat, you can gain a lot in a short period of time. Um, unfortunately, this race isn't super light. The, it's, pr it's a pretty average wind strength, so um, there isn't a huge amount to be gained in the puffs. But uh, they're still still better than not being in one, for sure. Uh, if we look at the way that the boat's situated right now, it's kind of leaning over to the left, so leaning over its port side. Um, that means the wind is hitting the right side of the sail here, so uh, or hitting the starboard side of the sail. So this would be starboard tack, okay, because the wind is hitting the starboard side. And if we look over here, well, Ed is also on a starboard tack. And uh, if we look at the map, they're not sailing directly to the buoy, right? They're sailing in a sort of a Z pattern. And then when they come back this way, because uh, there's two tacks, starboard, which they're on, and port, which they'll get to. And uh, so when they're on port tack, the, the, the boat will keel over to the, to the starboard side, and uh, the wind will be hitting the left side or the, or the port side of the boat, and that would be port tack. Starboard always has rights over port, and that's rule 10. Rule 10 is used more than any other rule in sailing, um, and it's, it's the biggest and, and brightest rule. Uh, it's basically starboard has rights on port all the time, and that rule is used heavily in the pre-start, and uh, that's what Drow is using for the most part as well. Um, so again, if there's any downtime in the race, uh, what I've been doing is just editing the video so uh, so that we're getting just you know most of the action a lot of times after the pre-start the pre-start's definitely the most exciting um, part of the race so after the pre-start's finished uh, it gets a little slow um, kind of like a chess match in a way there's there's some strategy some tactics uh, but not as much close combat so we'll get the, we'll get to the top mark and we'll, we'll show you what's you know where they're where they're sitting and then we'll do the same thing with the gate unless there's like some nice tacking battles or jiving battles but as of right now, it's it's pretty self-explanatory. Drow's in the lead, and uh, Ed's doing his best. So the boat behind, where Ed is at the moment, is trying to create as much lateral distance between the boats as possible. Drow's job as the leader is to close that gap and make it very small um, to make sure that he's defending his position. The further the boats get apart on the water, so if we look at this, the further the boats get apart laterally from each other, coming up the course, uh, the more chance that the boat behind has of, of catching up. Because what happens is the, the wind changes direction, okay? So you can think about if you're on attack coming this way, okay? If the wind changes direction, that's going to change the ultimate direction of your boats as well. And if it keeps changing direction, you're actually going to be sailing like perpendicular to where you're supposed to be going. So you have to eventually tack and sail the correct line. Uh, so 
So it helps the boat behind to to gain distance if they're really laterally far apart because then when they change tacks and they come close together, one of those two boats is going to have an advantage. And if it's the boat behind, boom, there you go. So both boats just, uh, eh, it's, it's not really attacking battle. Attacking battle would be, they're kind of just in and out and in and out of each other, in and out. Drow trying to put shadow on Ed, Ed trying to stay out of shadow. Uh, but right now, there looks like they're mainly sailing the, uh, the true wind angle and making sure they're getting the best lines rather than attacking each other. Which can be in Ed's favor uh, because uh, this is allowing Ed to create some distance. Typically, when you see the boat in front um, not trying to close the gap, it, it generally means that they have a really good angle to the wind, and they just want to make the most of that angle instead of like coming back on something silly just to close the gap. So there may, have, there may or may not have been a shift in the wind just then that allowed Drow to, to come back and, and um, sit on top of it. Okay, so Drow's tacked. He's on the ley line. And Ed will be coming onto the ley line soon. So if you look at the uh, at the map here, there's there's uh, the ley lines come out from the mark like this. One this way, and one this way. And um, you, can be, you can be over the ley line, somewhere over here, or you can be under. If you're under, you're in trouble, because then you're going to have to tack two more times just to get around that mark. They want to round it... Uh, uh, to, like the, the mark is going to be on their starboard side as they round, so they're going to come around this way. And if you're low down here, you, there's no way you're hitting that mark. You're going to have to tack twice, so it's kind of better to be over. But if you're somewhere over there, it's you're just sailing a ridiculous angle, right? So you want to make sure that you get your angles, you know, within proximity, um, but better to be over for sure than under. So they're rounding the mark here. Drow's got his spinnaker up. So the spinnaker, big sail right in front of the boat. And that wind hits it from behind and they just take off. They're going probably double the speed that they were on the upwind. And now instead of tacking, these are called jibes. So now they're jibing. When you, when you change direction of the, uh, in the wind and, and your boom, which is this thing here, comes over the boat. So it's going to come over the boat and it's going to come onto the other side. That is a jibe only because it's downwind. It's just doing your Z patterns. Although, instead of uh, big kind of like zigzags like this coming down, they're doing much narrower zigzags. So they actually get to the gate a lot quicker than they got to the top mark. They're going faster, and the angles are all better. What are the splits here? So at 6 minutes and 17 seconds, Drow rounded that top mark. And at 6.30, Ed did. So that's 13 seconds behind for Ed. Almost 14 seconds behind. And we'll have, we'll have another look at the uh, splits as they round the gate at the bottom. Alright folks, so they are... Uh, this is the gate here. This is the, the port buoy and the starboard buoy, and they can choose either one to go around to head back up to the buoy right at the top. Again, Drow's in the lead. I think uh, Ed was about 13.8 seconds behind uh, rounding the top mark there. Let's see what the, the splits are at the gate. Not a lot of attacking done um, by Ed, but uh, the, the gap is big enough that he'd have a really difficult time trying to take wind away from Drow. Get the splits open here. So, uh, Drow, Spinnaker down, getting ready for the upwind again, rounding the mark. At uh, 10 minutes and 22 seconds. 
And Ed taking the uh, the port rounding. <coughs> At 10.38. So that's 16 seconds back. So Ed's, actu Ed's actually lost about three seconds on the downwind. Two and a half seconds. 16 seconds back. Yeah, it's already saying well done. So Ed has conceded the match with that WD, which means well done. It was well done to Drow. Drow wins the semifinal. Um, if you enjoy the video, stick around. Hit the like button. Uh, subscribe. Maybe hit that bell. And you get notifications when there's some more videos. And you get to see a bit about uh, our life here as well. There's going to be some, some real life footage put up and some hiking and all sorts of fun stuff. So thank you for watching. Take care. See you later.